So there's this number on my running watch and it's a number that I tend not to think too much about. It goes up a little bit sometimes, sometimes a little bit down. But on the whole, it's just there in the background and I tend not to pay too much attention to it. But today I've come down to the University of Brighton to test that number, to see if my VO2 max is exactly what it says on my watch. So my current VO2 max score on my watch is 52, which based on my age, 32, places me in the good category for VO2 max. I think the highest it's ever been was something like 56. A few weeks ago, actually, I started paying a bit more attention to the VO2 max score because I knew that I was coming along here to do the test today. Uh, and it was actually at that point 55. So in recent weeks, as I've started training uh, and upping my training for my 50 miler, it's actually gone down. So it be interesting to see uh, if there's a reason for that. Maybe I'll be able to find out today. So here I am getting my mask fitted for my VO2 max test and Blair is just taking care here to make sure that the mask is fitted nice and tightly so no air can escape. And today's test I should mention is a free test actually so I haven't had to pay for this because I volunteered to take part in some research. Aside from the VO2 max test I've also done some other tests today including a full body scan, some blood tests, and also some other fitness tests too and actually the, the body scan was really interesting because I've never seen my skeleton before so I got to see an image of what that looks like bone density, fat percentage, uh, lean muscle percentage as well so all really interesting stuff you might notice there's a crash mat behind me so that is, as you can probably imagine for those who come flying off the treadmill uh, or those who need to crash out at the end so I'm hoping that is not something that I'm going to have to use in today's test. The format of today's test is that every couple of minutes the speed at which the treadmill is going or the elevation on the treadmill will change. So actually I started the test with five minutes of just standing still so Blair could get my resting heart rate. That was slightly higher than usual so it was going into the 80s and 90s at some point but that was probably a bit of adrenaline there anticipation of knowing what's coming in the later stages of the test but once that was established then we had some walking and as you can see here now i'm starting to jog lightly and there are really two things that are being recorded every couple of minutes by the team so firstly my heart rate and then secondly an rpe score so rpe if you haven't come across it before stands for rate of perceived exertion and that's my own subjective score of how i'm feeling in terms of the effort that i'm putting in so for instance a two or a three might be you know moderate exercise that you feel you're not pushing yourself too much right up until till nine and ten nine would be i'm almost at my limit i can't go for much longer ten would be i'm absolutely finished and i need to get off this thing there are actually some vo2 max tests where they fit you in a harness and rather than stepping off the treadmill at the end you simply just go until your legs can't carry you anymore and then the harness catches your weight so potentially more extreme kind of vo2 max test uh, but it's not what i'm doing today so this is where it's starting to get a bit more interesting the pace is being upped on the treadmill and there's a bit more elevation there too i'm about to get a heart rate reading which is going to come out at 177 and my perceived rate of exertion is now up to five so things starting to get interesting I'm trying to breathe more deeply my breathing's getting heavier and I'm also aware of what's coming so here I remember I was trying to keep my form not to kind of flap all over the place too much uh, but just to kind of focus and and try and maintain the rhythm So we've got a jump in pace coming up. Blair has just informed me of that and she's given me some good motivation. In fact, I have to say she was a solid motivator throughout the test, which really helps. So my heart rate has just been read at this point as 183 so it's pushing up towards my maximum heart rate which i know now is about 190 perceived rate of exertion is seven so we're getting towards the 10 now so pushing in that direction so yeah probably not going to be going too much longer on this 
So I'm currently running at 9.6 kilometers an hour with a 15% incline on the treadmill, which is roughly six minutes per kilometer, which on the face of it doesn't sound too bad in comparison to what I'm used to running. However, with the mask on and with what's come before, I am feeling quite strained at this point, and also the treadmill is just about to go up in pace significantly to 19.9 kilometers an hour, roughly a three minute kilometer with a 3% incline. So as you can see, that is the point at which I am done. And it's a pace that's very difficult for me to maintain, three minutes per kilometer. It's a 15 minute 5K pace, which as someone who runs a 5K in 1837, it's not a pace that I run for a, a long period of time. It might be a pace I do very short intervals at, but nothing uh, for a, a great deal of time. So I'm all finished there and as you could probably see that it got to a stage where I indicated with my hand I put it up you know, and to suggest to Blair like this is this is the, the limit for me I'm probably going to end up on the crash mat if I try and stick at this pace any longer and then I'm warming down here so just walking gently trying to get my breathing back and then in a second I find out my result what my VO2 max actually is. Uh, so I'm going to try it, it's good fun. Yeah, I look forward to it. In a broad definition of fun. Yeah, yeah very broad. <laughs> Some people might consider it. Fun. Like it's good fun. <laughs> So the final thing that is left to do here is to get my results and there was lots of data that Blair went through here, um, most of which I'm not scientifically minded enough to be able to break down. However, if anyone wants to see the full breakdown, then I'm happy to send it through in case you want to see what a VO2 max test looks like. The important number for me, of course, is what my VO2 max score is and that turned out to be 70.4. So wildly different from my watch's reading. You know, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, my watch was saying 52. So yeah, 18 difference, 18.4 uh, was the difference between the two scores. There are, however, a couple of things that could explain this. So firstly, when it comes to watches, they are, of course, trying to awkwardly calibrate a number of metrics other than lung function. You know, your watch cannot peer into your lungs. All it is doing is reading things like your heart rate in relation to speed, uh, distance, things that you're doing, and then it's trying to produce a kind of prediction based on that for your VO2 max score. The gold test is to actually go and have the mask fitted and do the proper test because that's gonna be able to know exactly what is going on in terms of what your lungs are taking in and what they are expelling. So that's the first thing. The other reason why my VO2 max might be a bit lower or significantly lower than when I did the proper test was because actually I do a huge amount of trail running and hills too. And I'm not actually using the function on my watch which focuses on that specifically. So there is a setting on my watch where you can set runs to trail run, but at the moment my watch probably thinks that I'm just running very slowly because over trails I'm slower and with hills I'm also slower. So it probably thinks that my VO2 max therefore is much lower than it actually is. So I guess that second one's on me really. I could switch the settings on my watch. I could see if that makes a difference. If when I go for my trail runs, I actually set it as trail run on my Coros Apex, that could be something that makes a difference and makes my VO2 max score on my watch more in line with the one that I got as a result of this test. So overall, I'm really happy with that as a VO2 max score. It places me in the excellent category for my age group. But of course, the thing to bear in mind is that there are many other ways of measuring fitness as well, not just VO2 max. So that was my adventure into VO2 max. Let me know below if you've had a VO2 max test and how much that has differed from the reading that you've got on your watch. And also if you've got any other questions about what the VO2 max test was like or what to expect, then just drop those in the comments below and I can get back to you. So thanks for watching, have a good week, enjoy your running and I'll see you all in the next one.